The Pay Types desktop is where you configure the pay type information in on Target. Pay types define and control the way that employees or contractors get paid through on Target. With pay types, you define the parameters for tax handling, overtime calculations, interaction with timesheets, pay rates, and any linking with wage expense and general ledger. In order to search for pay types, click on Search Pay Types. This populates a search grid with various filters that can help in your search for existing pay types. Any existing pay types can be exported to be managed in Excel, PDF, or Word as need be. To add a new pay type, click Add Pay Type. First, enter in a description. This should be a description that is consistent with the type of payment to be made. For instance, if this pay type is going to be for training, you may want to enter the description of training. It is recommended to set up a pay type for each of the billable service categories that you provide. The benefit to that is that after each payroll run, you can get an overview of the wages paid per service. Pay type descriptions should also be indicative of any special tax handling so that users know how to apply the pay types correctly to staff based on the way individuals need to be taxed. Contractor pay is a great example since contractors are not taxed typically. Specifying any tax considerations in the pay type description will help to ensure proper tax handling and application of staff pay. After the description has been entered, set the tax handling accordingly. If the pay type should be subject to tax, select subject to all taxes. If there are no taxes to be taken out on the pay type, then click subject to none, as in the example of mileage or contractor pay. Other tax handling variations are available as well. In the next section, you'll choose a pay type setting. This selection determines how on target handles the processing and calculations for a particular pay type. For example, if the pay is based on an hourly wage, select the hourly rate pay type. This will require all time to be entered by start and end times. All time for billable services must be against a pay type with the hourly rate setting as this is the mechanism for importing time into payroll. Salaried staff will most likely need a pay type with the salary setting. With this pay type setting, start and end times are not entered, rather a unit of one is entered against the pay type in which the associated salary amount per paycheck is configured. Hence, you're paying them one unit against that salaried rate every pay period of the year. The mileage reimbursement pay type allows the number of miles to be reimbursed to be entered against the pay type. Bonus commission lump sum and miscellaneous expense reimbursement allow a unit of one to be entered against the pay type with a predefined dollar amount. You're reimbursing or providing a lump sum payment once in that pay period against a set rate. Keep in mind the rate can change from pay period to pay period and you have the flexibility to control that in the employee record or at the time of creating the paycheck. Sick, vacation, and personal time should be set up to match the respective company leave policies. If you have policies for all three types of paid time off, then a pay type for each sick, vacation, and personal time should be set up with the respective setting here. The pay type will then work off of the leave policy so that the balances can be managed when paying people for their time off against the policy. A default amount is required. When the default amount is entered, it will automatically pull to the employee record when the pay type is added. If there is no default amount associated with a particular pay type, enter in zero. You may also enter the premium and overtime amount so that those rates populate to the employee record as well. Click on the pay overtime checkbox if the hours to be paid against the pay type should be eligible for overtime. Meaning, if they're working hours against this pay type that send them over 40 hours, will you pay the overtime rate? Likewise, include an overtime calculation 
instructs the system to include the hours against the pay type in the overtime calculation. Do the hours against this pay type need to be considered part of the 40 that takes them to overtime? If the allow manual timesheet entry box is selected, time can manually be added against the pay type on a timesheet. This is a great control point for the timesheets and is mostly used to ensure that time against billable services doesn't get added manually to a timesheet. Rather, the time is imported from the note or clinical documentation. Typically, only pay types that would capture non-billable time are checked here. Lastly, finish setting up the pay type by adding any default general ledger expense account information. This is critical if you are implementing general ledger. Select the associated wage expense account from your general ledger chart of accounts. Note that these accounts are set up under configure, list configuration, global, and chart of accounts. Every time paychecks are cut, the wages against the pay type are reported to the GL automatically through this setup. The disability tax is dependent upon the state in which you run payroll. Save the pay type when you're done. After you have created and defined all of your pay types, it is time to add the pay type to the employee record. We will do a quick walkthrough of that. First, go to the employees and search for the employee or add the new employee record. Open the employee and go to the pay types tab. This employee already has several pay types listed, but we will add another one for sake of example. Select the pay type description. As mentioned earlier, this is why it is important to have a clear defined description of the pay type so that you can select accordingly. Select the associated cost center the employee will be working the time against the pay type. The same pay type can be added multiple times in order to reflect each cost center they may be providing the service from. If the pay type that you are entering is associated with a billable service and a specific rate is associated with the services rendered for the particular client, select the client from the drop-down. If the employee will work with multiple clients at the same rate, there is not a need to add the client, only when there are client-specific rates. Select a service only if the pay type is associated with the billable service. This is very important for the import of notes or, or timesheets to payroll, as well as general ledger reporting by service. If a default amount was not set when the pay type was configured, enter the pay rate here, along with the overtime rate. The inactive checkbox can be used to manage inactive pay types, the default checkbox is used when a pay type has the same cost center and service in order to allocate wages to the GL correctly. Designating the default will tell the system which pay type the hours from notes or timesheets should be imported to. An example of this could be holiday pay. Often, providers want to track holiday time to the cost center in which a service is being provided from, but that is not the typical pay type that the hours get imported to. Therefore, that pay type would not be designated as the default for import. If pay rates change from time to time, or when there is a pay increase for an employee, you can manage that pay rate history here. Simply add a line to end date the existing rate and add a new line to add a new rate and the effective start date. Should you have any questions about pay types, please contact support by going to Options, Support, Contact Support.